Draft day is upon us, folks. Round one of the 2024 NFL Draft kicks off tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern in Detroit. I cannot wait to see how it all plays out. Not going to bore you all here with too much chatter. We're going to dive right into this mock draft. Really appreciate you all tuning in here to Rogue Football. I'm your host, Jordan DeLugo. The Chicago Bears, they get it kicked off with the first overall pick, and there are not going to be any surprises here. It is quarterback Caleb Williams. Some people call him generational. Some say he's a future bust. I think Caleb Williams is a fantastic prospect, unbelievable arm talent. I think he's a hard worker. I think he is going to work out in the NFL. He's going to stabilize the quarterback position for the Chicago Bears for a long time, and he's immediately going to be one of the more talented passers in the league. Going to be a really exciting offense up there in Chicago. Can't wait to see how it plays out, but they're not going to be done in the first round. We'll get to that here soon. But at number two overall, the Washington Commanders quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. I think that when you talk about uh, all the smoke around Jaden Daniels to the Commanders, it just feels like that's what's going to happen. Like for me, Drake May is the QB two in this draft. I think if you're drafting a quarterback and Caleb Williams isn't on the board, Drake May should be that guy. But Jaden Daniels, he is an unbelievable athlete, throws a beautiful deep ball, uh, has progressed a lot throughout his college career at Arizona State, then to LSU. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out for the commanders, but I do think that is the direction they go um, with the second overall pick at three. New England, another quarterback needy team. Drake May falls into their laps here. There's going to be plenty of folks trying to trade up for this one to get their quarterback. But Drake May to the New England Patriots, I think that they are now saddled with a quarterback who has prototypical size, arm talent, athleticism, all the tools to become a top flight quarterback in the NFL. That's all you can ask for in the draft when you're looking for a quarterback. At Arizona, wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. Look, this is another spot where I think teams are going to be trying to trade up. Uh, I think Monty Ozenfort showed last year he can absolutely rock the phone lines. But the Cardinals already have a ton of draft capital. They're a team that is loaded with picks in the top 104 this year. And I just don't think that they need to move off this pick. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best shot at a true blue chip player in this class. He is an unbelievable wide receiver prospect that brings pretty much everything you could ask for to the table. So I think Marvin Harrison Jr. at four makes too much sense for the Cardinals. And again, they have a ton of draft capital. They already have another first round pick. They've got picks throughout this first few days of the draft to, to get excited about, right? At five, this is where we see our first trade. The Chargers acquire 11 and 23. They move down from five to 11. The Vikings, they move up to get J.J. McCarthy, their quarterback of the future, a quarterback who I think, you know, in this world of quarterbacks being extremely valuable, right? Uh, incremental improvement in quarterback play can, can rapidly improve a franchise. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, I think he's worth taking a shot on to build around. Like he has the arm talent. He has the athleticism. He has the leadership, the work ethic. Do I think he's worth trading up from 11 to 5? Do I think he's worth giving up two first round picks? I think that's a bit of a risk. Like if they were able to sit at 11 and just take J.J. McCarthy, I would feel much more comfortable with that. But quarterback is the most important position in sports. They want to go get their guy. They clearly made the trade with the Texans having quarterback in mind, in my opinion. So Minnesota Vikings land their quarterback of the future in J.J. McCarthy. Next up, the New York Giants. They take wide receiver Romo Dunze. Uh, this is a pick where I think the Giants, they could take Malik Neighbors. They could go in a lot of different directions. But Romo Dunze really fits uh, what I think they need at the wide receiver position. They've got some speed at the position. They've got some guys that can fly around the football field. Odunze has speed, but he has a lot more. Brings a ton to the table as a you know big six foot three, two hundred fifteen plus pound wide receiver. Huge catch radius. Can separate. Can run. Uh, can go up and get the 50-50 balls. I just think that he is. He's going to be a wide receiver one in this league for a long time. He's going to help Daniel Jones. And this is an organization. I think this is a regime that knows they have to win now. So taking another quarterback doesn't really help you do that. Like if you take a quarterback here, I don't think you're going to be around following the 2024 season. And for these head coaches, these these general managers, it's all about, you know, keeping your job, right? You have to, to protect yourself, self-preservation. So to me, I think they take Romo Dunze to try to stabilize this offense a little bit in New York. At seven, Tennessee, they could go get Malik Neighbors. They certainly could. But to me, offensive tackle Joe Alt is just too 
obvious of a pick. He's a, a, a guy with blue chip pedigree. Dad was in the NFL for a long time. Very good offensive lineman for the Chiefs. This is a guy who's an incredible athlete, very technically refined. He's young. This just makes too much sense for the Titans. I think this would be the right pick for the Titans at seven overall. At eight, Atlanta, they could be a trade down spot, but I have them sticking and taking edge Dallas Turner out of Alabama. The Falcons, they need an edge rusher. Uh, They've needed an edge rusher for a few years now. They go get Dallas Turner, who, while he's not the most technically advanced pass rusher in this class, he does have the most upside because he is an insane athlete with incredible length, great versatility. I think he can already play the run fairly well. I think he can drop into coverage fairly well. You see a budding pass rush skill set and the natural ability to bend, to use his hands, use his length. So I think Dallas Turner makes sense for the Falcons at eight overall. Not my highest rated edge, but there's no question the ceiling is through the roof for Dallas Turner. At nine, defensive tackle Byron Murphy to the Chicago Bears. There's a little bit of smoke on this one lately. I know that with Malik Neighbors on the board, Chicago fans might not be super stoked about this one, but the Bears, they just recently invested in DJ Moore, then Keenan Allen. I know Allen's not like a long-term staple in this offense in all likelihood, but I think they're trying to win now. I think they're trying to build this thing up for the future as well. They went and got their quarterback. Now they get a defensive lineman in Byron Murphy who has the ability to play all three downs, can be a dynamic rusher from the interior. I think that makes a lot of sense for them. And then at 10th, We have our second trade. The Jets acquire 17 and 48 from Jacksonville. The Jaguars, they move up to 10 overall to take Malik Neighbors off the board. I cover the Jaguars, big Jaguars fan. Uh, So this might be maybe a little bit of wishful thinking, maybe uh, just trying to appease some Jags fans who have really wanted to see this happen. Uh, I already did my final predictive mock draft for the Jaguars. I had them trading down and taking Kool-Aid McKintree, which I think also makes sense. But in this scenario, with Malik Neighbors falling to 10 overall, with a lot of things that are very possible happening in front, I think the Jaguars could say, okay, this is our opportunity to go get the type of receiver that's really going to change the offense, it's going to be dynamic, that's going to help Trevor Lawrence out a ton now and in the future, and I think Malik Neighbors can be that. The Jaguars have been tied to Neighbors a little bit. They've shown interest in Malik Neighbors. And then you talk about the Jets here. This is an analytically smart move. They do not have a second-round pick right now. They do not have a lot of glaring needs in their starting lineup right now. I think trading down to 17, acquiring a second-round pick, is sound decision-making for the New York Jets. They're a team that's going to go all-in, but they can go all-in now with multiple early round picks instead of just one. The LA Chargers at 11 overall. Offensive tackle J.C. Latham out of Alabama. A lot of smoke around the connections between Latham and the LA Chargers. Jim Harbaugh, he wants to come in, establish physicality. They already have their left tackle in Rashawn Slater. You bring in J.C. Latham to play right tackle, bring that physical mindset. He is a big, mauling football player. He is young. He is powerful. He's a good athlete at his size. I think that he is the type of player that can help the Chargers establish the run early. I think he does need some technical refinement, needs to tamper back the aggressiveness just a little bit that gets him out of position. But I think J.C. Latham has all the potential in the world world to be a, a stalwart on the right side, you know, opposite Rashawn Slater, protecting Justin Herbert, getting that running game going. It makes sense for me. At 12, Denver Broncos, I do have them taking quarterback Bo Nix. I've liked this fit for a long time between Bo Nix and Sean Payton. I think that he can run a Sean Payton offense, right? He can get the ball out accurately. He can get the ball out on time. I think that Sean Payton really values that. And then Bo Nix can also offer you some of that playmaking ability that you're looking for in a first-round quarterback. He has the arm to get it anywhere on the field. It's not like a superlative NFL starting quarterback arm, but he, he can make every throw that there is in the playbook. And I think that he can, again, keep this offense on time, which is something Sean Payton really wants. And then at 13, Las Vegas Raiders, they're not trying to miss out on the the big quarterback party here. They take Michael Penix, another player that they've been connected to as well. I think that Penix, um, in this type of offense where you have a really good receiver, I think you try to build a vertical strike offense. You've got a pretty good offensive line. You can still upgrade a little bit at certain spots. But I think Michael Penix is a player they like. He's a leader. He is a 
better athlete than he shows on tape a lot. So maybe you can work more of that out of him, but absolutely throws the ball down the field uh, very well. And I think that the Raiders will get excited about that. And I think that's something Raiders fans can get excited about. Like, I don't think Bo Nix and Michael Penix are players that should be drafted this high. But when you're talking about the quarterback position, talking about getting some stability, somebody who can potentially be a quality starter, I think Bo Nix and Michael Penix do both have that potential within them. And then at 14, the New Orleans Saints, they were gifted offensive tackle Olu Fashanu here. They need offensive line help, offensive tackle help specifically in the worst way. You need to keep Derek Carr upright. Fashanu is a very good pass protector already, an elite athlete as well. I think that he has the traits, the athleticism, and the pass pro to uh, really help support what they need to get done there in New Orleans in year one. At 15, another gift. The Colts, Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. He will be the ultimate weapon in this Shane Steichen offense, a guy who they'll move around the formation consistently and try to funnel the football to adds another element to what they have going on in Indy with Anthony Richardson, with Michael Pittman, Josh Downs, Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, a good offensive line. I would like that pick a lot. At 16, Seattle takes defensive end Jared Verse. I think he's going to help establish the identity of Mike McDonald's new defense up in Seattle. And he's a guy that a speed to power merchant, super explosive, has good hands. I think that he's going to play the run. He's going to rush the passer. And he's going to supercharge that Seahawks defensive front. New York Jets at 17 after trading down. Offensive tackle to Lise Fuaga signals sound thinking. Instead of just saying, we're going to go all in on all these offensive weapons when you already do have nice offensive weapons, right? Uh, getting another tackle who can play tackle or guard, in my opinion, when you have two guys that you brought in that have both dealt with injuries to play tackle, you've had injuries across your offensive line for a long time, bringing in someone else to make sure the bottom doesn't fall out at some point in the 2024 season, and then also a future starter, it's just sound football thinking. And I think the Jets, for once, are going to go with reason here. Why do I believe that? I'm not sure, but I think the Jets are actually going to make some good decisions on draft night. At 18 overall, the Cincinnati Bengals, this is maybe the second step for T. Higgins out the door. Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. I don't think that the Bengals are necessarily going to get rid of T. Higgins this year, but I don't think he'll be there following the 2024 campaign. Brian Thomas Jr., another uh, young, athletic, big target for Joe Burrow, another LSU Tiger, you know, to pair up with with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I think that this pairing just makes a lot of sense. I think Brian Thomas Jr., can come in. He doesn't necessarily have to be a starter in year one. Maybe he can give you reps from the slot as well, but somebody who can eventually be a dynamic impact player for the Bengals who don't seemingly want to pay T. Higgins long term, right? Uh, get another receiver on a rookie deal. I think that makes a ton of sense. Then at 19, we have another trade. The Cowboys, they give up 24 and 87 to get up to 19 to take a Marius Mims. You've seen a lot of offensive tackles come off the board. I think a Marius Mims might be the most physically gifted of them all. His tape is good, even though there's not a lot of it. It's not like this is a project when you turn on the tape. So I think the Cowboys would love to land him and put him out there at tackle and really get this run game going again. And he can pass protect. He can run block. I think Amarius Mims, as long as he's on the field for you, is going to be a big-time upgrade for the Dallas Cowboys. At 20, the Steelers wide receiver Adonai Mitchell. You talk about Mitchell. A player that you know, there's a lot of varied opinions on. I'm a big fan of his game, but there's folks that talk about his lack of effort. Maybe isn't the favorite of some of the coaching staffs he's been around. I don't see it. I like him a ton. And I think the Steelers, Mike Tomlin, this is a guy that's shown the willingness as a coach, as an evaluator, to kind of overlook some potential character issues to land really good players that are going to help the football team win. I think that's exactly what Adonai Mitchell can do for the Pittsburgh Steelers. At 21, Miami Dolphins, they lost a lot on the offensive line this year. We've got Graham Barton coming in to be a starter and a guy that can play a lot of different roles for you. If there's injuries at tackle, he can you know, kick out to tackle, play there for you. You start him at guard in year one, and I think he comes in and does a, a really good job for them, or even center, right? There's a lot of different ways it can go for the Miami Dolphins, but Graham Barton's going to help them out, help that offensive line not really skip a beat after losing some guys in free agency. Philadelphia, unbelievably, kind of like it was unbelievable that Jalen Carter fell to the Eagles last year, the first cornerback has yet to come off the board. Quinion Mitchell to the Eagles. 
Um, this is a pick where you've got some aging veterans at corner. They're still playing pretty well, but you've got to get younger at that spot. You've got to get cheaper at that spot long-term. Quinion Mitchell is such a talent. He's got the size, the weight, the speed, everything you could ask for. He aced every step of the draft process when it comes to tape. Then you'd go to the Senior Bowl and dominate. Then you go to the Combine and dominate. Quinion Mitchell to the Philadelphia Eagles at 22 overall. Los Angeles Chargers, another cornerback comes off the board. Cooper DeGene, I think that he is another one where he's got the height, weight, speed. He's a young player. I think he's still ascending. I think the best football for Cooper DeGene is ahead of him. But he's very physical, kind of fits that mindset of a Jim Harbaugh team, in my opinion. Then the L.A. Rams, after trading down from 19 overall, they take defensive lineman Johnny Newton. This is a guy that, you know, I'm not going to compare him to Aaron Donald. I think that's ridiculous. But can he be a pass rushing menace and a stalwart against the run on the interior that you can move around the front a bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think Johnny Newton can be that for you. I think he's a guy that should go way higher in this draft. But for some reason, there's just not a lot of buzz. I think Johnny Newton is a blue chip player in this class. And the Rams smartly are able to land him all the way down at 24 overall. Then at 25, another corner, right? Cornerback run does not start until the 20s, but it gets going here. Uh, the the Green Bay Packers take cornerback Terry on Arnold. They've got guys, right? Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, you're looking to rebound. But I think Terry on Arnold just gives you such a ceiling, and uh, I love the athleticism he brings to the table, the physicality, the mindset, the aggressiveness. I think he'd be a really good fit for the Green Bay Packers. At 26, Tampa Bay, Edge, out of UCLA, Leatu, Latu, Falling all the way down to 26, I think that he is better on tape than this would suggest, but there is the medical issues. There is the fact that he's not like the most dominant athlete, even though he is a very good athlete in his own right, but doesn't have the greatest length. Buccaneers say, we don't care. This guy's going to come in. He's going to help us produce uh, against the quarterback, you know, rush the passer. And also, I think that he's an underrated run defender. I think he'll be a starter for them for a long time in Tampa. In Arizona, at 27, their second pick, they already went and got Marvin Harrison Jr. Now they get an offensive lineman in Troy Fatanu out of Washington who can really just kind of help fortify the, the offensive line. I think there's some spots they could upgrade, certainly on the interior of the offensive line. I think Fatanu could eventually be a starting tackle for them. I know they drafted Paris Johnson last year as well. But he helps you protect Kyler Murray, protect the investment, and make sure that the Murray to Harrison connection is alive and well. So at 28 overall, Buffalo Bills are up next. Cornerback, another one. Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. The Bills, they need a lot of help in a lot of different spots after kind of unloading due to cap restrictions this year. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry just makes too much sense for me as a guy who's going to come in, be a good cornerback for them in this defense for a very long time. He might not have you know, the most eye-popping change of direction or explosiveness, but Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be a steadying presence on the back end for them, in my opinion, uh, in Buffalo. And Detroit, offensive lineman, Jackson Powers Johnson. I think he can play center. I think he can play guard. This guy just fits what they want to do, in my opinion. I think they have some aging veterans on the interior of that offensive line. Jackson Powers Johnson, he's going to provide depth. He is going to compete to start quickly in his young career with the Detroit Lions, and he will be a stalwart for them long term. At 30 overall, Edge Chop Robinson to the Baltimore Ravens. I've mocked this one before. I just think it makes a lot of sense as a guy that uh, I think that they can really weaponize and move around the defensive front and try to get pressure on the quarterback. You want someone chasing Patrick Mahomes around in the playoffs? I think it's Chop Robinson. I really do. Uh, San Francisco, offensive tackle Tyler Guyton played right tackle for Oklahoma. I think that you can try to plug him in pretty quickly. Um, there's definitely some growth that needs to be had and when it comes to technical refinement, when it comes to understanding all of the assignments in the running game. But from a physical standpoint, Tyler Guyton is certainly a first-round talent. I have him more day two because, again, I do think that there's a lot of technical refinement and, and mental side of the game that he needs to grow in. But the 49ers, I think they can take this guy, feel like they can coach him up and get a plus starter out of him, someone who actually does have Pro Bowl potential despite needing a lot of growth. And then at 32 overall, the last pick in the first round, I have the Kansas City Chiefs taking wide receiver Lad McConkey. I think – Prior to the Rasheed Rice issue that popped up, um, they could have gone in a lot of different directions. Now, 
they do have Hollywood Brown. They do have Travis Kelsey, but they don't have somebody to perform in the Rasheed Rice role from last year that became incredibly valuable to them down the stretch. I think Lad McConkey can do that with flying colors, you know, moving around the formation, running a lot of underneath routes, running uh, through the slot. Like they weren't asking Rasheed Rice to go up and get contested catches to win one on one on the outside. I think Lad McConkey can do everything Rasheed Rice did for you and add even more of an explosive element to that role. And we don't know how long Rasheed Rice is going to be out, if he's going to be suspended, what's going to happen. But Lad McConkey can certainly fill that role. And I think even fill it better than Rasheed Rice did in 2023. That's going to do it, though. I think this is this is an example of what could happen tonight. There's so many different permutations, so many different things, ripple effects that can happen throughout the draft. We don't know how it's going to play out, but I think this would be an exciting way for the first round to go. I think you see some offensive tackles really coming off the board, uh, you know, starting at seven overall and coming off quickly after that through the teens. And then the cornerback run gets pushed down a little bit because teams want quarterback. They want offensive tackle. They want wide receiver. So some of these guys get pushed down the board and you got some really good value at corner in the 20s. Really love to know what you guys think. If you're a fan of any of these teams, drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.